The introduction of the Malian franc took place in the year 1962, making Mali the first francophone African nation to abandon the CFA franc. Regrettably, in 1984, Mali was merged into the CFA zone, and the Malian franc was abandoned as a result of internal conflicts and France's resolute refusal to grant complete independence to any of its former colonies. Up until this point, no francophone nation has seriously considered deposing the CFA franc and replacing it with its currency. The new regimes and military juntas have already announced their intentions to leave the ECOWAS bloc, and now they have proved that the creation of a unified regional currency is their next priority. Not only the money, says President Traore, we will free ourselves from whatever binds us to slavery. In an interview with Stake Television, the chairman of Niger Junta, Abdurrahman Tiani, expressed similar sentiments, stating that leaving the CFA franc will be a declaration of independence and a critical step away from French domination. We are actively working to regain complete sovereignty, and money is a symbol of that, General Tiani added. Our state status as France's cash cow is now very moot. France has taken about 107 years away from us. We need to figure out how to improve our alliance's communication channels jointly. As previously mentioned, no francophone country has dared to even contemplate or initiate measures to demonetize the CFA franc since Mali did so in 1962. This is a daring step. In contrast to other African governments, the military juntas of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso are known for always implementing their promises. Their plan to establish a single currency had actually been discussed for some time, even before they decided to leave the ECOWAS regional grouping, as was recently made public. Do you remember that in September 2023, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger all signed the Liptako Gorma Charter? That charter formed the alliance of the Sahel states which, in turn, created the groundwork for a confederation among those three countries. Its original purpose was to allow the three nations to combine their armed forces in the fight against terrorist organizations or rebel groups. President Traore later disclosed, however, that the alliance's ultimate purpose will be to transform from a defensive union into a genuine economic, monetary, and political union to oppose the ECOWAS bloc. November of that same year saw a joint statement from the three state finance ministers proposing an export committee to investigate the possibility of monetary and economic union. Creating a unified currency called Sahel was a historic endeavor to re-establish their monetary sovereignty. Numerous discussions regarding the decision's consequences have taken place since Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso broke their news to the world. The CFA franc, a currency pegged to the euro, supposedly gives macroeconomic stability to every francophone country that adopts it. Some experts have warned that ditching the currency would be a bad idea as it is risky and exceedingly complicated. Wait, is this accurate? General Charles de Gaulle generally created the CFA franc on December 26, 1945, by proclamation. This colonial currency originated from France's desire to exert control over the political systems, economic structures, and resources of the colonies it administered by encouraging economic unity among them. Financial agreements between France and African countries set the CFA franc as pegged to the euro and mandated that West African and Central African central banks hold half of their foreign exchange reserves in a separate operational account with the French Treasury. The fact that no member of the CFA has ever had a serious financial crisis is an argument in favor of the currency's legitimacy and stability, which its advocates are now praising. While this may be accurate, the reality remains that African nations are bearing a disproportionate share of the cost associated with the currency's purported stability. Think about it this way, in exchange for France guaranteeing the limitless convertibility of CFA franc into euros, every member country of the CFA is obligated to deposit half of its foreign exchange reserves, currently around 10 billion euros, into a special account in the French treasury. However, is there any logic to this? Just why is it necessary for a sovereign nation to entrust another nation's bank with half of its foreign reserve funds? Our view is that it is nothing more than a means by which France can maintain dominance over its former colonies. Using the CFA franc also has the unintended consequence of making African commodities more expensive than they are. 
Countries in the CFA zone cannot unilaterally manipulate their currency rates to impact their economies, unlike other African countries. Since the CFA franc is pegged to the strong euro, their costs are inherently higher, and they have no say over the value of their currency, so any attempt to weaken it to boost exports will have to wait for France to take that step. Imports from nations with weak currencies, such as China, benefit from this, and their economies become less competitive as a result. Importing completed goods further reduces CFA members' ability to industrialize and increases their reliance on raw commodity exports. So, who exactly does the CFA franc help out? Proponents of the CFA franc argue that inflation in Francophone Africa is lower than in other parts of Africa because of the currency's widespread use in the region. This could be correct, but the economy is sluggish, and fewer jobs are being created because of this so-called low inflation. The stability of the currency entices international investors but hinders domestic output, which explains why this is the case. To put it simply, the CFA franc benefits individuals who stand to gain from it, such as powerful businesses in France and abroad, bank officials in the various zones, wealthy individuals seeking to repatriate their money, and foreign leaders wary of upsetting France. Therefore, in the coming months of 2024, the revolutionary administrations of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger will terminate the colonial agreement signed with France several decades ago. However, printing more banknotes is not the only way to create a unified currency. Apart from deciding what to do with over $4.6 billion worth of outstanding regional bonds denominated in CFA francs, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso will have to navigate the delicate transition away from the CFA franc, establish monetary policies, and address the creation of a new central bank. The total value of Burkina Faso's outstanding bonds is over 1.2 trillion CFA francs. Niger has 498 billion CFA francs, and Mali has just over a trillion CFA francs. If the three governments were to withdraw from the CFA zone, experts predict it would cause chaos and uncertainty, potentially hindering their access to future funding from regional and international capital markets. Introducing a new currency could lead to an immediate devaluation due to capital flight caused by the uncertainty. Considering the potential consequences, military juntas are approaching currency issues cautiously, in contrast to their handling of the ECOWAS exit. The establishment of a new currency depends on several factors being in place. Interestingly, although this matter is being discussed and scheduled to be addressed, the military juntas in Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso, upon assuming power, have taken bold steps, including expelling France, criticizing Western influences, and ultimately leaving the ECOWAS bloc. Throughout history, these nations have made it clear that they prioritize their independence. If their ambition to establish a common currency materializes, these leaders will be remembered as African leaders who refused to bow to Western pressure and granted their country's monetary independence. Do you have any opinions? Please share your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and share it.